world and they are preparing and planning for a global currency. They must get rid of the dollar. And by the way, if you recall, there was a time about, what, 30 years, maybe 40 years ago, they took us off the gold standard, yes. put us on the oil standard, because there just wasn't enough gold to go around was their excuse. But they, when they got rid of the, of the dollar at $32 an ounce, which mm-hmm. stayed at $32 an ounce for years and years, right. half of the 20th century, um, then the dollar, we began to see inflation on a grand scale. It was really debilitating for America's uh, currency. Now, J.R., the rich man in question here uh, in James chapter 5 uh, really are greedy power mongers, let's face it. But they put a pretty face on their activities. They say, well, we're redistributing the wealth, redistributing the wealth. We're going to take... Uh, some of the wealth from those nasty rich people, and we're going to give it to the poor, and then everyone will live a better life. And that's, we see that happening on a daily basis today. Every country of the world is talking about health. We need to improve the health. We need to improve the food supply. We need to improve the lot of the poor man. And to do this, we'll create all these wonderful financial schemes, and it's all a lie, J.R., and it's all uh, as James points out quite uh, quite plainly, it's all a scheme in order to lay up treasure for the last days. Recently, a British um, a, a British ad, uh, economic advisor, Lord Monckton, who was advisor to uh, Margaret Thatcher, has made the statement that this coming uh, December in Copenhagen, that the United States will sign our sovereignty away. We'll cede our sovereignty as mm-hmm. we promise the rest of the world that we're going to redistribute our wealth to the third world countries because we've been using all of the um, fossil fuels and polluting our atmosphere, and they haven't, and so they need to be compensated. That's kind of like saying we're going to pay the Indians, you know. Well, or yes. we're, we're, going, we're going to put all of the people that we have hurt in the past, we're going to put them on the payroll and all of us poor Suckers who are citizens of the United States who work hard and earn our living are going to have to dole it out to these people. Sure. That's called just redistributing the wealth, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Now, Jerry, let me ask a question because as we're drawing close to the end of this program, uh, I'm sure that a lot of people are thinking, I wonder if this is going to happen soon or I wonder if this collapse is going to happen before the rapture of the church or after the rapture of the church. Will the body of Christ be on earth to see this huge financial collapse? And I'm looking at 1 Thessalonians 5, <clears throat> where Paul says the day of the Lord is going to come as a thief in the night. And then he says here in 5.3, For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with a child. Not us, on them. Mm-hmm. And I've always believed that we would be kept from that day of wrath, including the very uh, uh, monstrous kind of upheaval that's going to take place in the tribulation. I, I think the church will be gone before that time. Yes. And that could be, uh, you could supplant that idea uh, with another idea, uh, which you read about in Revelation chapter 6. Uh, where we have the riding forth of the four horsemen of the apocalypse, and one of them, the black horse, represents a financial crisis. He's a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand, and I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, three measures of barley for a penny, and see, thou hurt not the oil and the wine. In other words, at the opening of the tribulation period, we see financial chaos. Uh, so when I put together 1 Thessalonians 5 and Revelation chapter 6, I sort of see the, the, the tribulation timed with financial collapse. Indeed. You, if you look back over history, you'll see that God blesses those who work. Six days shalt thou work. That's what he said. Yeah. For the chosen people, there were times, of course, when he sent them off into uh, captivity and scattered them from the land because they did not keep the economy of the land like God wanted it. 
Right. They were to plant crops for six years. They were to let the land lay out for the seventh year. But you know what happened? They decided to plant crops the seventh year as well. And uh, so greed always creates problems, doesn't it? But generally speaking, God has blessed the Jewish people. God has blessed the Jewish people. You cannot um, say that their financial uh, blessings that they have, that their status in this world is the work of anything other than God. You just can't. You can't blame them. You can't blame the devil. God blesses His people. Now, let's turn this around. By the way, David said, I've never seen God's seed begging bread. Mm -hmm. That's right? true. Now, let's look at the Christians. Look at the Christians in America. America was established as a Christian nation. Okay? I mean, back when our forefathers established America, they did so upon the Bible. Our forefathers prayed before they signed the Declaration of Independence. For days, they had prayer meetings. Now, my point is this. God blessed. And God brought our nation to the forefront of the world. Look at our natural resources. Found all that gold in the, in the Rockies, and then in California, and then in Alaska, and, and then there's oil. And so, so we have more natural resources than anybody else in the world. God has blessed America. Why? Because it was established as a Christian nation. Now look at the Christians. The Christians in America, I realize there are some who are poor, but they're not poor like, like ungodly people are poor. You look at the ungodly, you see them, oh my, they, <laughs> they, they're in the insane asylums. They are, uh, they are uh, on, on the bottle, uh, on drugs. It, it, oh, yeah. it's, it's the ungodly people that go around shooting up heroin and all that kind of thing. But God's people have been blessed. I can't, I can't really get into the nuts and bolts of it, but generally speaking, you can see that God blesses His people. J.R., as I came in studio today on my car radio, I heard a financial report that said that all of the merchants in America were fearful that this would be a terrible Christmas, meaning that people would not be buying and selling uh, as profusely as usual. And they were measuring Christmas by the flow of money. And I thought to myself, have we come, have we sunk to this level? Yeah. Because I don't measure Christmas by the flow of the dollar. Right. I measure Christmas as a commemoration of the coming into the world of the Prince of Peace. And, and he, he who would bring redemption to the world has nothing to do with mammon, in my opinion. So you're going to be hearing financial reports like that, and you need to brush them aside. Yeah. Well, I want to take you to Revelation 18. The merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise any more. Cool. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all and so on. See, in the tribulation period, there's going to be financial chaos. So prepare for it. When will the dollar die? It could be in the tribulation period. And, of course, we're not here to tell you when the tribulation period will begin. But I want you to know, it's coming. So if you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you need to trust Him today. Just pray a simple sinner's prayer. Repent of your sins. Ask Him to forgive you and save you. And He will. I'm J.R. Church with Gary Stearman. Until next time, keep looking up. Prophecy in the News is a viewer-supported ministry sponsored by our many friends across America and in your area. For your gift of $10, you can receive a special edition of our current program on audio tape, or for a gift of $20, we'll send you our programs on videotape. For either order, call the 800 number on your screen right now.